The Church of Christ we have today, a blessing from the Lord. He gave her to His Son to say, and take her home above. The Uh, 
I, I don't know how many preachers have preached the gospel and yet the scriptures testify that they haven't never yet been told. I mean, how do you, how, how, how do we rightly glorify a per, the perfect God? How do we, how do we, how do we represent Jesus Christ in a way which be pleasing to him? We, we look at ourselves, I know I do it myself, and find that find myself lacking. Heard a fellow on radio today talking about sin and said that it means to miss the mark. And uh, it is an archer, you know, that uh, can't hit his target. That's sometimes that seems to be seems to be my lot. It seems like I miss the mark a lot of times. We are centered by nature. But I'm encouraged because the things that are in the scriptures and, and the, the fact that Christ would call us to the ministry. That God would set us apart and to be able to preach that glorious gospel of Christ. And I say humanly, it's impossible. But I know if the Lord is in the matter, He makes it possible. Makes that, he makes that, it pleases God uh, that we assemble ourselves together. And these seven churches that we've been looking at, the lessons that we need to learn from this is uh, it's a snapshot of the church. Uh, different churches had different problems they had. Um, this particular church is uh, when I first when I first got to looking at Laodicea, I was kind of worried I wouldn't know anything to preach about. <laughs> but I found there was a lot to preach about. Uh, it's a negative thing here. Jesus got nothing positive to say about the church at Laodicea, and we need to learn from this. I mean, it's, I know it's like I say I, I was fearful, really fearful, to get into the church at Laodicea because of the, because of its shortcomings, because of, the, of it faltering and falling. But begin to realize that we don't know what their problems were. You know, we're bound. There's well, it's a, I, I call it the two rules of law of, of history, two, two laws of history. I know everybody's probably heard that first one. If you don't learn from your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And you, you, if you study history for any length of time, you find that these cycles repeat themselves over and over and over again. The Lord's people would would uh, they would they would repent. The Lord would come and bless them, then they would fall, fall to the wayside. The Lord would withdraw his, would withhold his blessing from them, and they would falter and fall. Then they would do it again. They'd repent, and the Lord would come again and bless them. He would all, but he was always faithful to hear. The second law of history verifies the first law, that is that we never learn from our history. And we keep repeating it. Well, the truth is, brothers and sisters, if we are grounded in the word of God, that we're not tossed to and fro as by every wind of doctrine. We've got to be in the Word of God. And this, this church at Laodicea had some problems that we need to really pay attention to. But before I do, I, I, I want to go back to that first verse again and just introduce this particular thought because it's important. I found two scriptures, a passage of scripture I think would pretty much sum it up. He said, unto the angel of the church of the Laodicea. Remember we said about the angel. I mean, a lot of people think we're talking about guardian angels. It's not what it's talking about. An angel is a, the, the Greek word is angelos. And it means a messenger. In this particular case, the messenger that the church at Laodicea is their pastor. is the one who preaches to them. They said, to the angel of the church at Laodicea is right. See, Lord Jesus Christ is, is, is dictating this letter to the Apostle John. And the Apostle John is, is writing the letter. And he's going to get this letter sent out to all these churches. And this letter was intended, this entire revelation letter was intended to be read to each one of these churches. Now, common sense is going to tell us there were more than seven churches. There are more than seven churches now. The, the, the number seven, we need to remember, keep it in our minds and understand. It always talks about the completeness of something, the fullness of something. The fact that these letters are written in seven churches tells us that it's written for all the churches in all the ages. This church, this, this letter was written specifically for the church of Salem. You can particularly for your church, for this church. And when I say this church, I'm talking about the church at Denton, the church at Dallas, the churches at Fort Worth, wherever they might be. It was intended that these, this letter and these things be taught to these churches. In order that we might know, as, 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 uh, as Paul said to Timothy, that thou mayest know how thou art behave thyself in the church of God. It's through these seven churches, brothers and sisters, in the, in the writings of the apostles, 
and the teachings of scriptures that we understand what church looks like. It's not, it's not left up to you and I to wake up and decide how we're going to conduct church. It's not our say-so. It's the scriptures. It's what we learn from the scriptures. And we learn a lot from these seven churches. But anyway, he says, And to the angel of the church that lay in the sea, and write these things, saith the Amen, that so be it, the ending, the beginning, and the ending, the faithful and true witness, and the creation of God. And in this 40th chapter of the book of Psalms, in certain verse uh, 6, he said, Sacrifices and offering thou didst not desire. My ears hath uh, thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. When I first time I read this, I thought, wait a minute, that's exactly what was required under the law. The problem is not in, in, in the scripture, the problem is in my understanding of the scriptures. Not required meant that that was not the requirement to eliminate sin. They, they were required by the law. But, but keeping the law and keeping those blood sacrifices under the law would never do away with sin. And then said I, and by the way, this is, David wrote this, but this is the Lord speaking. Then said I, lo, I come. And in the volume of the book, it is written of me. He said, I delight to do thy will, O God, and yea, the law is within my heart. And again, we find this same language in the 10th chapter of the book of the Hebrew letter. And I'm just going to read this pretty fast. So we'll start with the first verse. He said, And the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the thing, could never, with those sacrifices, which they offered up year by year, continue to make the comers there too perfect. It, what it's saying is this. No matter how many those sacrifices were offered, those animal sacrifices, and no matter how well-intentioned the, the giver was, not one drop of that blood would do away with sins. Could not God was not requiring animal sacrifice to do away with sin to, for, the, for, for that covenant. For then would they have not ceased to have been offered. In other words, if that sacrifice was suitable, it would have been necessary to continually do that over and over again. Because the worshippers, once been purged, would have no more conscious of sins. There would be no more sins if that be the case. But in those sacrifices, the remembrance again of the made of sins every year. For it is impossible that the blood of both bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when cometh he into the world, I want you to think about this word world because we're going we're to focus on this in just a minute. He saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. Prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices and sin offerings thou hast had no pleasure. Again, reaffirming to our, our mind and understanding that not by keeping to the works of the law will any man be justified. Then said I, uh, the writer of the Hebrew letters quoting David in the 40th Psalm, lo, this word lo is an important word. It means to consider this. Look intently upon it, closely at what's about to be said here. Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. You know what it's saying here? I want this out of here because he's the amen. The volume of the book tells me this, this volume of this book from the first page to the last, it's all about one man. The man is the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, to do thy will, O God. And above, he says, sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not. Neither have pleasure therein which are offered under the law. For then said I, then, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. What was the will of the Amen? To save that which was lost. To redeem those that God the Father had called and elected before the foundation of the world. Uh, to redeem those, brothers and sisters, that had fallen in sin, that were placing Christ before the foundation of the world. To all those to whom the Holy Spirit came upon to give eternal life as he will. And then said I, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God, to take away the first, the first being to take away the law, remove the law, to remove sin, that he may establish the second, to bring in that new covenant we call the covenant dispensation of grace, to give us the church, to, to, to have that opportunity, the few that we are, to assemble ourselves together to worship in spirit and truth. 
Brother sister, this cannot be understated. It's better, far superior, that two or three are gathered in His name to worship Him in spirit and truth than 10,000 that would assemble themselves together to worship a false doctrine. He said, by, by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. One time, having offered up those sacrifices. Now this church at Laodicea, I said that I, I was hesitant and nervous about it. You know, I didn't give it a lot of consideration. Uh, I, one time I attempted to preach from Revelation chapter 1 to the, to the last verse. And Revelation took me almost two years to do it. And I went, I kind of sped through this thing and kind of didn't focus. You know how it is whenever you're a little kid and you got to go to the doctor and they're going to give you some medicine that don't taste good. And you think, well, if you take it real fast, maybe it'll just go by real quick. That, that's the way I kind of treated the church at Lay of the Sea. And I thought, well, it's kind of like bad, bad medicine. I can just read through it real quick and just get on past the pain and the bitterness of it. But we need to pay attention to it and we need to focus on it. They had a problem. They had a disease, an ailment from the sisters. Um, that, that, the problem that they had, uh, I'm not going to go back and read all these, but over in the, in the, in the uh, fourth chapter of the book of Matthew, Jesus having uh, been baptized by John the Baptist and having uh, the Spirit of God uh, come down in his body as a dove, the Holy Spirit, and the Father speak to the Son and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That, that day, that very day, the scripture says that the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And, it, and in the 8th verse of, of, the, of the 4th chapter of Matthew, we find part of the problem that this church suffered with. It's not a unique problem. It's not a new problem. It's something that, that happens to all churches. If we take our focus away from the kingdom of God, if we, if we, if we cease to, uh, 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 to labor in, in the kingdom, if we cease to pray, we we forget the Lord. He said he took him to a exceedingly high mountain. And the scripture said he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in an instant. And he said, all these uh, kingdoms have been, have been given in my hand. These are all what I give to thee, to thee if you'll just fall down and worship me. There was the problem, the disease was the world. The wickedness of this world. Jesus was tempted. And the scripture says in all points like as you and I. I. I sometimes try to put myself in that place and think, well, how would I have respect, reacted if I had been offered every kingdom and all the power and the glory, riches and wealth uh, in the kingdom? How, how would I have fared through that? I realized that Jesus said, without me you could do nothing. I probably would have faltered and failed. I remember the story what a fellow told one time about what if Adam had not sinned. And that, he, that, he, that would come time to partake of the fruit, you know, he had not sinned. And that his son had not sinned. What if, what if that were the case? And, and went down to David, and David had not sinned. And, and it continued on. And, and the next person, next person, none of them ever sinned. And then it came to me. And I sinned. I, I realized, brothers and sisters, there's a disease that's the world encroaches in around us and over there in the uh, in, in Luke chapter 12, Jesus tells us not to seek, uh, uh, not to not to uh, 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 to seek after the things that we eat or drink or the things that we're going to wear. He said, "Neither be of a doubtful mind." He said, "For all these things do the world seek after." It's the things of the, of the world, worldly things. All these things that, that we seek. And, and we, he said, be not of an anxious mind. For he said, your father knoweth that you have need of these things. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to us. The world is involved. And in Colossians, uh, in Colossians chapter 2, the apostle Paul warns us to beware of those that would come and spoil us with vain philosophies and, and vain deceits uh, and after the rudiments of the world. It's these things, brothers and sisters, that the world seeks after, the Gentiles look after. Uh, uh, it, it, those are the things that, that are the diseases that come and infect, infect our churches. And James said that, that if we're friends of the world, we're enemies against God. I believe with all my heart, brothers and sisters, that's what the problem was at Laodicea. 
to many of our people. And I, this, I'm so thankful for this little church. And, and from the time I first uh, come to you, among you folks, of the sincerity that you have and the desire uh, for worship in the church, uh, I'm, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still amazed at the attitude of that of forgiveness you had for your so-called neighbor. When, when my desire was to get a lawyer and try to sue that man and try to recover monies that he defrauded you out of, and the, and the response that I got was that we had already forgiven him. We don't, we're not going to go that way any longer. Uh, that's the Lord doing that. And I'm not saying that to lift you up and to make, make you think more highly of yourself than you ought to, but it's a blessing for the sister to understand the, the, the doctrine of forgiveness and put it into practice. It's contrary to the things of the world. But this church, uh, as, as so many churches do, uh, uh, bring, bring in the world. But we, when I think of the world, religious world, you know, they they got a program for everything. I mean, they got youth programs and and and, and, and all kinds of a bus program ministry, you know, and and, and, and in, in an effort to try to uh, bring in more people to the church, they try to bring in the things of the world. And to eventually, and they, they scratch their head today, I, I hear it all the time. Can you figure out why those, those things are no longer working any longer? Why is it that, that, they're, that all the churches, and I mean, mean that uh, loosely, all these religious orders seem like their numbers are beginning to decline? Because there's no difference between them and the world. The only difference between them and the world is they talk about and use the name Jesus and the name God. But they've lost, they've they given in to the root, given over to the rudeness of the world. Why, why, I ask myself this question, why would a young person want to be in a place that's no different from the world? It's indistinguishable from the world. When, when, when they do surveys of the divorce rate and find that the divorce rate among religious orders is no different than they of the world, and I submit to you, it's because they've taken in the world. They, they, they've, left, they've left the rudiments of Christ, the basic doctrines and the practices that are laid down in scriptures and embrace those things of the world in order, in order to somehow protect themselves from the world. They've opened the door for Satan and brought in heresy. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's that way today, it's that way there. Uh, I, I'm not picking on any particular church among the old Baptists, but I've been in places where uh, back in, 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 in Kentucky, excuse me, Tennessee, went to visit the church. It was four times, the building was four times this, the size of this entire building. In fact, I think this entire property would have fit inside there. I've never seen a, an old Baptist church that big. And I watched, we sat out in the parking lot, and I told Sister Lisa, I said, I, they probably bought this building from somebody. There was a big steeple up on top of it with a cross, and I mean, just beautiful uh, cathedral looking building. And so I asked him when we got there, and he said, no, no, we built this, it's our building. But the point I was going to make was that they, I watched the clock, and I sat out there until 10, 15, not a song showed up. And finally, one gentleman came and unlocked the building, and we went in, and about, just about two minutes before song service to start, everybody showed up all at one time. They all rushed in for song service. They sang exactly 30 minutes. Exactly 30 minutes. And then they stopped. And exactly their prayer lasted about 35 seconds. And that man preached exactly one hour. And when, when the last amen ha happened and they shook hands, they all disappeared just that fast. There was no time for fellowship. They didn't sit down and, and find out what their needs were. They, didn't, they weren't praying for one another. I, I submit, brothers and sisters, that the world had crept in. And they got what, what, I, what this, problem, this church here had was a problem of spiritual apathy. They, they, on the outside, they looked very religious. Uh, Jesus said they're like the Pharisees. said they were, they were white on the outside. But inwardly, they were dead, had dead man's bones. They forgot why, why they were there. They, they, they would go through the motions. In this 15th verse of this third chapter of the Revelation letter, Jesus said, I know thy works. He had this to say about all the other six churches. Let's, let's, let's understand. He knows our works. 
He's aware of our work at Salem Church today. He hears our prayers. He knows, brother and sister, there's nothing that, that we do that's not revealed to our master. I know thy works, thou art either cold or hot. Now on the surface, that's a strange statement. He said, I would that thou were cold or hot. Now, what is that? What's he talking about? Well, he's talking about apathy, lukewarmness. Lord, why? I can understand him if he were if he left out that word cold. If he, if he were to say, I know thy works, that thou art not hot. We know hot means there. You heard that expression on fire for the Lord? It means there's no need for repentance. You're, they're, 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 they're living and reigning in the kingdom. They're, 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 when the gospel's preached, they're there. The doors are open. They come in. They're, 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 they're family. They, 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 just, they talk to one another. When the preaching service is over, they're, the last thing that's on their mind, brothers and sisters, is what's on sale at the, at, the, at, at the department store. They're talking about the sermon. They're talking about what they've read in the scripture. They're on fire. They're hot. See, I can understand the, the, why he would prefer to be hot. The cold part kind of threw me. Why would the Lord Jesus Christ prefer that they were cold? Yes, ma'am. What were you going to say? That's right. Because there's room for penance. I, I don't know about you, brother and sister. I don't like being cold. When winter comes around, I'm looking for a sweater and a jacket to put on to get myself into that warm position. If, if he said, I would rather you be cold or hot, you're neither one. He said, they're, you're just lukewarm. They're satisfied with the status quo. Uh, they're, they're, they're not, they're nothing. They've become stagnant. They weren't doing anything. They weren't, uh, they, 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 they would talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. They had a disease. They had a cancer, and it was worldly worldly doctrines and worldly living. So because thou art neither lukewarm, because thou art lukewarm, neither hot nor neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He said, because you're dissatisfied, because you're dead, he said, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich. You see what they've done? That Lord had blessed them. And they come up with this attitude that they had done it themselves. It's like it's like Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar looked at the kingdom that God had given him and said, I, I, Nebuchadnezzar, had done these things. And before, when he, when he was on his way back inside, the Lord struck him down. And he was, he was struck down like an animal. And he lost his mind. And the scripture said he ate, he ate uh, the grass in the field like a cow. And, the, and, and that the dew of the heaven lit upon him in his hair. He was like feathers in his, in his, in his, in his, in his claw, in his, his fingernails were like claws. And then the scripture said, then he came to his mind. And he praised the most high God. You read about that over in the book of Daniel. He said, thou sayest, I'm rich. They looked at the blessings of God and began to think, look at me. Look what I've done. He said, it increased with goods. They, they, they got the blessings. They didn't know what it was like to have somebody come and try to take away their liberty. They were living peacefully. And I have need of nothing. They had everything they needed and they no longer sought God for their sustenance. He said, thou, and, but, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. They didn't understand what the problem was. Uh, uh, they, they were lukewarm. They weren't concerned. I, I, I don't know. I, I can only assume, brother and sister, they weren't even, they ceased to pray. They may, they, there's a good example of that over here in the 15th chapter of the book of Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. And he said, then Jesus, then came Jesus, to Jesus, the scribes and the Pharisees, were at Jerusalem, saying, I want to look at this disease. I want to look at the impact, if you will, that the world has upon the churches. Brother Sister, hold the course. Ask for the old past. Don't move the ancient landmarks. He said, which were in Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Let me tell you something about the tradition of the elders. There was, in, the, in the Old Covenant, they have a book they call the Torah. It's the five books of the law. The Old Testament. We call it the Old Testament. But they wrote another book called the Talmud. Anybody ever heard of the Talmud? The Talmud was what the, 
is what the the uh, 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 the, the the teachers had written. The, the their their what am I trying to say? I can't think of the word I want to use. Their 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 leaders, everything had written concern concerning their uh, what they had what had been said. It was a commentary. What was a big commentary uh, uh, that they, had been written. This the tradition of the elders is called the Talmud. Still use it today. He said, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. And the Talmud is where you get the idea uh, of cleanliness is next to godliness. You ever heard that before? I heard it all the time when I grew up among the Armenians. That, that you live a clean life, that means you're godly. Cleanliness is next to godliness. It's, it's, it's keeping the law, which is what it is. If you keep the law, you're godly. And he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition?" They put their focus on the Talmud and forgot about the law of God. They forgot about what was written in the Torah, what was written in what had been given to them by the hand of God. For God commanded in the Talmud, it didn't say that. In the Talmud, they had the words of men. But in the Torah, they had this commandment saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. He that curses father and mother, let him die to death. How important are families, brother and sister? How important are our families? How important are the families around us? Now, do we remember to pray for our families? He said, but, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father and mother, it's a gift. Where, where, uh, uh, for whatsoever thou mightest have been profited by me. What he's saying is this. He said, well, I know this money was meant to take care of you, but it was going to be for your benefit, but I dedicated that money to the, to the temple. He said, honor not his father and his mother. He shall be free. Why? Because he gave it to the church. He gave it to the, to the temple. He dedicated it. So it was okay for him to neglect his father and mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God, the Torah. You made it to none effect. The old covenant you took, you made it to none effect. But by, by your tradition. He said, you hypocrites. This is what Jesus is saying to the church at Laodicea. He doesn't say the word hypocrite. He says, you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. He said, you hypocrites. Well, did his eyes prophesy to you saying, this people draw nigh to me with their mouth. They say the words. They go through the motions. But they honor, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There's the disease. Brother Sister, the world creeps in. And we become apathetic. He said, but in vain they do, do they worship me. Uh, they teach you the doctrines and commandments of men. They've traded, brothers and sisters, for the doctrines and commandments of the men. They try to bring in the things of the world in an effort to try to bring in, in, in others into the churches. They call themselves, they do it the will of God. Uh, it's a ministry, they say. It's a ministry. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 3. reading with the first verse. <clears throat> oh, that's first Timothy. I said, that must not look right. Okay. <clears throat> and that's Titus. Y'all already hit waiting on me? <laughs> <clears throat> he says, in this know also that in the last days Perilous times shall come. When are the last days? They're, they're not, we're living in the last days. We're li John, John the Baptist was living in the last days. These are the last days. We're, I, I believe, this is my opinion, I believe we're living in the last minutes of the last days. But when, this is the last days. Know this also that the last days perilous time should come. You don't have to be very intelligent to figure out that perilous time will come. For men shall be lover of their own selves, and covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Sound familiar? That's the disease. You're, you're, what you're doing right now, brother, see, we're looking at that disease of worldliness under the microscope. God's microscope. We're seeing it the way God sees it. This is the way it is in the last days. He said they're disobedient to parents. You see any, any disobedient in, in children? We, we were told at the school district that we're that we are no longer to correct children when they're wrong. 
where I work. We're not supposed to correct them anymore. That you just let them do what they're going to do. You can't you can't send them out of the class. If we're told. He said, without they are unthankful. This is the problem of apathy. From such a department, the church at Laodicea had. They were rich. But they weren't thankful for the blessings they received. They forgot. They, went, they were going through the motions. Maybe not even going through the motions. Without natural affection. They, you know, they're not, they're not thankful for the things they should be. And they're not angry with the things that they, sh that they should be. They, 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 they don't have it. They're false accusers. That's a fancy way of saying they're a bunch of liars. He said they're, in, they're incontinent. It means they, they won't stand for the truth. They won't, they're not able to stand. They falter and cave at the least little bit of pressure. Sound like anybody we know? He said they are fierce. When, 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 when you talk, when they, I'm, I'm told that in, in Canada now, if you even dare to say in, in a public place that you believe that marriage is between one man and one woman, they will throw you in jail. Uh, where, where, where did that come from? They're fierce. They're fierce. Despisers of those things that are good. Sound familiar? It's the disease. It's the disease of worldliness in our churches. Traitors. Heady. That means they think of themselves. They, the world revolves around them. Each person lives in their own little universe. And nobody else is allowed to come into that universe. They're high-minded. It's a self-defining term. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You see, this is not something new. I mean, it sounds to us like it could be written, this could be written today, but this was written 2,000 years ago. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, having that form. They look religious. You know, they got, they got a steeple. They got a cross. They got somebody called preacher. He preaching, he, he's up there preaching the doctrine. You got people who got songbooks and, and, and pianos and bands and you name it. They got it all in there. They, they bought a bowling alley. You know, you get what I'm, what my, what I'm talking about here. Uh, they, they have a form of godliness. Well, we talk about God while we do these things. In order to draw all people to the Lord. And even, even, though this, even though Jeremiah 31 says that, that they shall all know me from the least of the least of the greatest. They shall not say to every man, his brother saying, know the Lord, but they shall all know me from the least of the greatest. They are going about trying to do what's already been done. Trying to make children of God when God has already made his children. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from which such turn away. Here's the remedy for the disease. Turn away. Was it Barbara Bush that just said, don't just say no? Yes, just say no. Should we have a piano? Just say no. Do we need a bowling alley? Just say no. Brother sister, the rudiments of the world are, are it's detrimental to the church. He said, for this sort are ye which creep into, into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away by diverse lusts, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Would you permit me to say it this way? The world is detrimental to the truth. It'll cloud your judgment. It, it will, you'll have people who come in who have doctorates in, in, in theologies and PhDs with all kinds of, of learned knowledge and, but have no wisdom. I, I, I love to think of it this way. Mr. Einstein, there's a billboard when I got once he got a picture of Einstein with his tongue hanging out and said as, 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 a high, as a high school student he was no Einstein. But Einstein had invented that thing, he'd come up with that thing of the theory of relativity, E, e, equal, to e, M, e equal to MC squared, and they took that little bitty mathematical formula and said they would make an atomic bomb out of it. They had the knowledge to build a bomb, but ain't smart enough to know not to use it. Does that sound familiar? That's the disease, Brother Randy. That's what happens in the churches. That's what we need to be, uh, be watching for. That's why, that's why James, why, excuse me, why Peter said be, be, be vigilant, be sober, uh, uh, be watchful, for Satan goeth about as a roaring lion, 
seeking whom we may devour. He's got his target on you and this church. Not just this church. I'm talking about our sister churches. What you remember, y'all remember 9-11? I know you do. It's kind of like it's kind of like if you were alive there in Pearl Harbor, you know, people will tell you, well, where were you with Pearl Harbor? Well, I was before my time. But now, now the kind of thing is, where were you at 9-11? I know exactly where I was at. But I told my son, son-in-law, my sons and my daughters, it's not an attack on the United States. It's an attack on the church. Satan knows where the church is at. That all of this, Brother Sister, is happening. Uh, is 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 the attack of Satan on the church. I tell you, that's what he's after. Satan's no, no fool. He knows that he can undermine families and marriage. He can undermine the church. The two things are connected together, and God has made it so. He says, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. If you listen on the radio, the Christian radio, and I do from time to time, the last thing you're going to hear is the understanding of the gospel. You'll hear a lot of things, but for some reason they seem to miss, they miss that mark. And in James chapter 1, he says, James, the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the twelve tribes are scattered abroad. Greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall to diverse temptations. What, what was wrong with the, the church at Laodicea? They hadn't been tempted. They hadn't, been to, they hadn't had any trouble. Things had been going well. They forgot about it. They were lukewarm. Knowing this, the trying of your faith work with patience. But that patience have a perfect work. Here's we're we'll getting to the remedy. He said that you may be perfect, enduring and wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. Which giveth unto them liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. But you ask, he said, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave that's driven in the with the wind and talk and talk. Let no man think that he is receive anything of the Lord. The double-minded man is unstable in all of his way. Let brotherly love, let, let the brother of low degree rejoice that he is exalted. Here's the remedy, brothers and sisters. Here's, the, here's, here's how to get out. Of, here's, here's the medicine to take care of the disease. But the rich, in that he is made low, because the flower of the grass shall pass away, and the sun is no longer risen in burning heat, but, but it withered the, withered the grass and the flower there it faileth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. But he said, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. You see the solution to the problem. The solution to the problem, enduring temptation. It's a blessing. <clears throat> For when he is tried, he shall, come, he shall receive a crown of life. And the Lord had promised to them that love him. And I want to move on down to verse uh, verse 22. He said, Be ye doers of the word. What did they forgot? They weren't doing anything. They, they ceased to labor in the kingdom. Be ye doers of the word, and not just hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in glass. But he beholdeth himself and goeth the way a straight way, forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso, who, but whoso looketh to the perfect law of liberty, here's the solution again, and continueth therein, liberty in the, in the word, liberty in the kingdom, being not forgetful, not, not being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man that is blessed in his deed. See, that's what they had lost. This is what they forgot to do. If any man among you seem to be religious, see, they had that problem. James could be just as well talking to the church at Laodicea. They, they seemed to be religious. They were lukewarm. They had a, a mixture of the world and a mixture of, of the gospel. They mixed those things together. If any man among you seem to be religious and brighteth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is vain, it's worthless, it's empty. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. You want to know about pure religion? You want to, you want to live and practice pure religion? 
is to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep thyself unspotted from the world. Unspotted from the world. Let's get back over the Revelation letter. I think we got an idea of what was going on. Now, Jesus gives them his prescription. Verse 18. He said, I counsel thee. This we ought to pay attention to. Jesus is the counselor. He is, he is the counselor. His prescription is, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried with fire. How do you buy from the Lord Jesus Christ gold tried with fire? How do you buy it? It means you've got to purchase it. It means there's some action involved. It's obvious, brother and sister, this is a conditional text. I talked to a fellow over in Florida the other day, a landmark Baptist that calls himself. And, and, and in that thing, he, a lot of the things I read it, I agreed with. And I called him up and I said, well, what's the difference between you guys, you folks, and a, and a primitive Baptist? He said, we believe that whatever will be, will be. And we know that you believe in time salvation. Or he said, I primitive Baptist believe in time salvation. I said, well, I'm one of those people that believes in time salvation. He said, well, I appreciate it. You can just call me anytime. I found all I needed to know. But I wanted to know. I asked him, I said, well, what's the difference between you and a Calvinist? And he said, well, we're not Calvinist, but he never would tell me why. I couldn't see any distinction between the two. But the counselor, Lord Jesus Christ, speaking of a church, and we need to take this to heart. Because from time to time, we need to be this way. We, so we get apathetic, and we get settled in our ways, and it affects the church. He said, I counsel thee to, uh, uh, to buy of me gold. What's the gold? It's not talking about literal gold. It's not talking about that kind of wealth. Gold is, the, is a Bible symbol for kings and kingdoms. He said, talk about buying of gold, tribe of fire, speaks of us being priests and kings to God. He's talking about buying the kingdom and living in the kingdom, purchasing the kingdom, brothers, by our labor and our works. See, we can't work our way to heaven's glory world. But we've got work to do in the kingdom. We've got work to do here. We're praying for one another. Asking the Lord to send laborers into the harvest. And praying for the ministry. There are things we need to be doing. We need to be about our Father's business and even as Christ. He said, I'm tried in fire. It means it's tried. It's, it's, it's held the test of time. The trials and tribulations come through. The kingdom of God is such like a thing. It's been tried by fire. If she's been through persecution or blood. I heard somebody say one time, her history is written in her blood of the mourners that have died for the cause of Christ. Said that thou mayest be rich. You know, they thought they were rich, didn't they? But Jesus said, you're poor, you're wretched, and you're naked. He said, if you do this, if you, if you pray to me, he said, knock, and you shall, and it shall be open, seek, and you shall be fine. You shall find. Brothers and sisters, we, we, we have not because we ask not. He said, and, and white raiment, that white raiment is white is a type of righteousness. Raiment is our covering. You know, they're poor, blind, and naked. But, brothers and sisters, the gold that they receive from Christ, tribe of fire, is asking for the right of Christ to be clothed in his righteousness, not in our own. That's why we're able to preach the gospel, because we're not doing it in our power and our own strength, but we're doing it in the righteousness of Christ and his power. That's why, for the sinner, you're able to receive and live in the gospel. You can't do it in your own strength, and you can't do it clothed in the flesh. You've got to be clothed in, in, in the spirit of Christ and His righteousness. He said that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness does not appear. And anoint thine eyes with, the, with eye salve. You know what that anoint the eyes is talking about? The eyes is our, is our vision. And spiritually, he's talking about our attitude, the way we view our lives. He said, anoint your eyes with eye That eye is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the gospel of the world. I'm talking about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And lay down uh, 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 from generation to generation, uh, from Adam until the last child of God come to this world, that same gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ delivered to the church. He says, uh, and not thy eyes that I said, that thou mayest see. Brother and sister, that gospel drives out the world. But we've got to live the gospel, brother. Sister. We've got to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. He says, Many as I love, 
I rebuke and chasten. There's comfort there. See, I find it interesting that he didn't just throw them out with the bath water. Like the little baby out there says the bath water. He's given this admonition. See, when I, when I think about the Armenians, when I think about the Calvinists and God's people, wherever they might be, some of them are not called the name Christian. I know that's controversial in the world, but God knows His children. I know He's got a nation, I've got a people in every nation and every kindred and every tongue, and not all of our old Baptists. I, I know this to be true. He says, As many as I love are the beauty of chastening. And I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but I'll say it to you today. It's to be so jealous over the Armenian because I can see that God would answer the prayers. But I've got to be like these folks. I got kind of apathetic and I resented the fact that God would have to just take the time to answer their prayers. But God revealed to me one day they're His children too. And He, I, he said, I will. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on whom I will. He, he hardened it. Put me in my place pretty quick. So I pray for those, those brethren. Uh, he said, be zealous therefore. Doesn't sound like he's telling them to stay where they're at. Be zealous. Get yourself hot. I'm not talking about wearing a lapel pin that says I'm on fire for the Lord. I'm talking about, about doing what he tells us to do. Keeping, the, keeping his commandments to love one another, even as he hath loved us, to pray for one another. Preserve and pray for the ministry, to pray for to send labors into the harvest. He said, and, 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 and repent. Turn away from your lukewarmness. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Brothers and sisters, the world has got this upside down. They got half of it right, but the other half they flipped upside down. The image here, behold, I stand at the door and knock. There's, you've seen the painting. Jesus is standing at his door. He's standing at the door knocking. His door, there's no, there's no door knob on it. I agree with that. He, they, that is exactly the image that Jesus is putting here. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. But the problem is that people think that's the door going into heaven's glory world. If you open the door, I'll come in and I'll sup with you and I'll, you'll be born again you'll go to heaven. But he's not talking to that. He's not talking about that. He's talking to a church here. He's talking about his children. He's talking to the church at Laodicea. This lukewarm, apathetic church. He said, I'm standing at the door and knock. Yes, he's a gentleman. Thank God he's not a gentleman that would come to eternal life. Because I heard people say in, this, in reference to this, see, he's a gentleman and he won't just force himself on you and get you saved. And I, I, I'm glad that he's not that kind of gentleman. Uh, because he came, suffered, bled, and died, and everyone he suffered, bled, and died, or will go to heaven. This is not what he's talking about. He's standing at the door of their heart. But he's talking about the heart of the church. He's talking about the heart of those that are apathetic, <coughs> those that have lost their way. He's talking to the, to the, to the churches of, God, of his people. He said, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man will hear my voice and open, I'll come in. Not for eternal life, but for fellowship. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. You don't need 3,000. You don't need 4,000. You need two or three. He said, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. And then we'll close with these last two verses. He says, to him that overcometh. You know, that's important, brothers and sisters. We've got a lot to overcome. We, we, need to, we need to remember that our situation is not unique. What we're seeing in our government, what we're seeing in our society has been repeated. That's the reason I was telling you what I was telling you a minute ago about history repeating itself over and over again. The ones who, the ones who don't, uh, don't suffer from that are those who understand their history. The ones that have read the scriptures. When, when, when Jesus uh, foretold the destruction of Jerusalem, he warned them to flee to the mountains. Now, a little historical note. When Titus, the general, later to become emperor, when he surrounded Jerusalem, he didn't come to destroy Jerusalem. In fact, he, 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 he told them, you guys just lay down your arms. We, we can solve this peacefully. We can go home. Well, there were some that took up that call because Jesus had warned them. That when, the, when, that, when that desolation came, when they desecrated the temple, 
to flee to the mountains, and they did. Some of them went out, and rumor went around afterwards. After, when the Lord opened the door, they left, but he, he closed the door. But there was a rumor that going around that the Jews that were leaving after that were swallowing their gold. And, and you can read about this with Josephus right? And said that, uh, uh, they would come and they would dissect those people to steal their golds and their riches that they had swallowed. And when Titus gave a commandment that, that had to stop, they just waited until it was dark when they couldn't see and they still did it. But there was a few, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in thy midst, that took that counsel that, that Jesus gave them. They fled from Jerusalem and they were preserved. But the door was closed and Jerusalem was destroyed. He said, Him that overcometh, we need to overcome by putting on the whole armor of God. I don't need to read that until you do a fifth, in the fifth chapter, sixth chapter of Ephesians letter. And having done all to stand, we got some standing to do. We've got work to do in the kingdom. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me at my throne. That's here. That's now. That's a blessing of the kingdom and the church. Even as I also overcame. And I have sat down at the, with my father in his throne. And we'll close with this verse. He that hath an ear. You have an ear, brother sister. Dear. I'm not talking about natural ear here. I'm talking about a spiritual ear. He that hath an ear to hear. It comes through, this, through the new birth. You've got one. Uh, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the seven churches. And we're going to close right there.